Hey everybody, welcome to Scar Thumb Podcast. It's David here, hosting again. Damn, the chat's full. We got Jack, Greenlight, X Runner, Deborah. Good morning. Good to see you guys, or good evening if you're uh, over on another part of the world. Today we're going to talk about, ooh, we're going to talk about the Shill Media. As you might have known, their uh, their first uh, <laughs> their first uh, loyalty isn't to the customer; it's uh, to themselves. Wherever is going to pay them the most, uh, and you'll we'll see this uh, today. This is an article from That Park Place. So Ubisoft buttered up YouTubers and influencers with trips to Disneyland and boat tours to promote Star Wars Outlaws. So we we've known for a long time that the sort of access I like I actually do like the term access media because a lot of it uh you know especially in the past and even today there's you know people will get access to these events or access to uh demos of the game or early access to to the game and for like YouTubers now especially Getting this early, oh, I can make guides. I can, uh, you know, have all this video. Even after once the NDA is put out, I can just have you know a bunch of guides set up, and guides are big money. So having early access to the game or access to a demo when other people don't is a big deal. It can you know generate a lot of money and a lot of subs for uh, people. And in order to get that access, of course, you have to you have to play ball. You have to be nice to these uh to these studios and of course you know ubisoft probably one of the sleazier studios out there in terms of uh, what they do and really not making a uh, lately not making the best games as a uh, they still have to uh, put out assassin's Creed shadows but this article uh, this was an investigation <clears throat> done by a german youtuber actually uh so this german youtuber cyberpunk 20xx discover multiple youtubers influence revealed how they were actually influenced by ubisoft as part of the company's largest marketing campaign ever and this is from ubisoft ceo i have no idea how to pronounce uh, this like yves guillemot i think it's french i think they're a french company uh revealed that the company was rolling out its largest marketing campaign ever for star wars outlaws during a recent of earnings call report uh, Barclays Nick Dempsey asked, "When I look for guidance for Q2, that if I assume something similar for the back catalog in Q2 as a Q1, kind of getting into the 20 to 230 million sort of range, the new release of Outlaws. When I look at the $70 price and then assume what you might get from it, I'm getting around five million units. So they think they can move five million units of this uh, Star Wars Outlaws here." Uh, and that's a conservative, uh, conservative uh, estimate for them. Uh, we can't comment on the numbers you're quoting, but from what we factor in a strong launch, Outlaws reflects the fact that that is among the most awaited games in the in, in the industry, definitely, and a really strong positive community sentiment. Well, if it community sentiment isn't positive, they're going to make sure it is by just uh, throwing as much marketing as possible into this game well we are coming up with the biggest marketing campaign ever for an ubisoft game so that's what been factoring in the second quarter so let's see if i got is this the no here so this uh right here kind of this is this guy this video but first i have to say that i was flown out this is, to play star wars outlaw so this is star wars this is the ev i mean look at this event that they've got going on right here. They got so a whole to say this. 3D model, like just the ugliest looking woman it's that, that I they can not make. give my impressions on my actual experience with Star Wars Outlaws just yet. I mean, they have an entire little, so th this is how you do it. You bring a bunch of influence in it. You get them in a room like, oh, guys, are you excited for this cool thing? You know, get that sort of social pressure going. I'll be sharing that shortly on the channel with a brand new gameplay that I captured from the event. But I just wanted to note that I cannot give my personal. So this is just a ridiculous looking set. Impressions on the game just yet. So think about how much money this costs. 
when you could have just hired people to, I don't know, make a better model. Everything I say here will be based like anything, anything else. So, I mean, like there's like two different ways to really market a game, maybe more, but uh, earlier this year you had games like, you know, Power World, which was, uh, and like Hell Divers, which I like it either an interesting concept that people haven't really seen before, you know, Pokemon with the guns and it's sort of like just ridiculous looking clips. Everyone was like super excited. Oh, this looks really cool. Let's, you know, make a multiplayer crafting server. We got like a little Minecraft, a little Ark, a little Pokemon or Hell Divers, which had a really crazy presentation, really interesting gameplay. Uh, people just really liked that sort of Star Trip Troopers vibe. Uh, and like the crazy sort of multiplayer action and moments you could get from the game. But uh, the other way, and the, you know, this sort of had uh, this organic sort of viral growth that happened, you know, simply because the game was, was either fun or interesting or both in some cases. Um, but when you have a game that isn't particularly, doesn't look particularly fun or interesting, uh, you have to go with a different route. I mean, you look at the well. You look at the Star Wars Outlaw stuff. People are like, people are ragging hard on this. Uh, let's see if I can pause at the right frame. This uh, people are ragging on this explosion effect here. Then like, this is a this is a game with like hundreds of millions. Probably like 200 plus million dollars. This month's IGN first is Star Wars Outlaws. We'll be diving deep into and massive they entertainment. Stole, they stole the Sarlacc tooth. People are looking at this gameplay and thinking, well, the whole D23 looked expensive. Some of the sets were really cool. D23? Let's see. I was trying to, let's see some gameplay here and as you like you look into this gameplay it looks you know uh looks passable they have like some interesting you know good looking sets when i look at this i'm like oh this, it doesn't look horrible but at the same time there's not just it's kind of missing that oomph. there was a oh Sarlacc tooth gets stolen here. He's sneaking up, and there we got a stealth thing. All right, Nix, go get him. Nix attacks him. This is what I hate. I I hate that. So she's like just, you know, like supposed to be like some hundred, under like twenty pound girl is what it looks like, and then here she is just meleeing. We're just gonna melee this guy, knock him out, take that. This completely ruin, ruin any any idea that. Hmm. How should I put? How should I put that? I think she could. Their character could have worked if one they made her model actually attractive. Uh, two, if they actually kind of emphasize the sort of plucky, uh, underdog type of outlaw, you know. But when they, when you have to like make her seem like super tough and strong. You really kind of undermine it, like, oh, here's a kidney punch, and then an uppercut to the jaw. Like, bam, I could totally do that. Instead of, like, trying to sneak up and, like, hitting him in the back of the head with something heavy. Now, like, she, you know, seems to have, you know, difficulty swinging. Uh, kind of emphasize the fact that, yeah, she's, she's weaker physically, but she makes up for it with, you know, wit or ingenuity or, you know, just caginess. Not showing broken hands exactly. It just, it just doesn't work for a character like this. But they they want to they want to force it into a. You can't you can't just have her appear weak in some ways. That wouldn't be empowering. Because I mean, like with mm, with a game like this, like when you have like a female lead, it's not necessarily you know a, a power fantasy, especially for most of the male demographic you don't want to just uh, uh, there, there's some ways that it can work in some ways it can't i shouldn't put oh the disney show uh i don't i don't think so 
Uh, it was a Disneyland. I think it was. It was happening near Disneyland, but maybe not. I'm not 100 percent sure. But something like this, with like a character like this, I think it's better for uh, to make a character that uh, people want to root for rather than people want to, you know, be. I suppose is the the right way to put it. Because I mean, you have like characters like maybe Bayonetta or Samus, which I think the sort of like badass. Uh, you know, one's a witch, the other has a power suit. But with like a character like this, that's supposed to be kind of trying to escape uh, from the planet, uh, escape poverty type of thing. Going with a more uh, well, with a weaker route can work. And the fact that, like, you don't want bad things to happen to them. You want to root for them while you're playing as them. But not necessarily, like, you know, sort of be and then, you know, just uh, take over the galaxy with them. This type hurt. of thing. Like, you know, like a Jedi would be more of a power fantasy. While something, well, a character like this wouldn't, wouldn't. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, asides, asides apart. Getting back to the, uh, the, the game looks looks decent. I mean, like if you look at this part, now there's like so like some fun blaster shooting. People have been ragging on just how dumb the AI is because you just had a giant explosion. Like, oh, w w what's going on? <laughs> just, let me walk up and just die. And then someone still doesn't know. I now they finally figured it out. We found her. <laughs> it's like uh, Morrow. People compare it to like Skyrim or Morrowind levels of uh, AI detection. So stuff's gonna be uh, pretty good in this game, I can guess. Uh, just standard like 3D third-person action type of game. She gets a, I like guess at some point she gets a grenade launcher and she's shooting it. Looks like a poop. That could be fun. Not bad. I don't know if I'm gonna pay seventy dollars for this. They're just everything about this just doesn't seem that triple A level. Where the detail is just they're good enough, but they're not quite there to make to make people go like whoa, or at least make me go like whoa, this looks really awesome. So, and this is like the usual triple A MO right now. It's like make something that's good enough, you know, get it done within a certain time period, and then just market the crap out of it. So when they're talking about these uh marketing campaigns, so basically they're and they're talking about they uh, brought in British influencers, YouTuber Lewis uh, Julie, who revealed she was brought to Los Angeles by Ubisoft earlier, was taken on a boat boat tour. She claims was originally a whale tour to see if we could spot any whales. And what's interesting about this, like they bring them in, they you know they fly them. Oh, here's a cool event. Here's a whale tour. Here's Disneyland. You get to do oh yeah seventy plus all the deal. It's like one hundred and twenty for the max level or you could get it all for your Ubisoft subscription. Only 15 bucks for the Ubisoft subscription. I don't know if that's going to be day one or not. So like the, either that or they're pushing in their Ubisoft plus. Uh, but uh, the cyberpunk uh, confirms but that uh, internal and domestic flights for you. So they're paying for the flights. They're giving you whale tours, a day at Disneyland, all this stuff. And what's interesting is I don't necessarily know if the YouTuber really needs to say, oh, yeah, they didn't pay me for this. They don't need to mention it because they weren't paid to put out their review content, you know, explicitly paid to do it. You know, they control whether or not this is the really annoying thing about some of the copyright laws, especially on YouTube, where they can just copyright strike you if you put out any sort of film on this, even though it's your film. Uh, for these events, but so they could control exactly what you're able to put out and what you can't right now. And they fly out. They don't need to really necessarily say, and then I love this. Uh, some of these tweets so like Ubisoft flew me out to California, to play star Wars outlaws, interview the game director, lead writer, and meet the cast. I'll be all grateful for this opportunity. Yeah. I tour P tour of Disneyland tomorrow. And that's like at Ubisoft at Atlas. I assume they had to put all these ads in it, but then like this, it becomes like a flex. Hey guys, I'm shilling star Wars outlaws. Isn't that cool? 
And then, you know, there's a, just a e-girl, Queen Tofu, having a blast. Like, she literally put hashtag Ubisoft partner in there, which I guess is, if, if you see hashtag Ubisoft partner, uh, you're probably dealing with a shill. And there's, you know, Star Wars HQ. These guys, uh, actually, I have this video. They're, they're doing like a little lightsaber uh, posing here. Build it. An epic lightsaber at Galaxy's Edge. It's just like constant consumerism. Fellow outlaws, content creators, and explored the park. This was an absolute blast. Cool. <laughs> this was also Star Wars HQ. I played the Star Wars. I love the way they just phrased this, this tweet. I thought it was funny. I played Star Wars Outlaws. All new open world gameplay plus my honest impressions. And then honest impressions and then underneath it, hashtag Star Wars Outlaws, hashtag Ubisoft partner, hashtag ad, which I think he might have had to, like he was forced to put in by Twitter or something. I love my honest impressions. Also, I'm an Ubisoft partner and this is an ad. Very honest. I can definitely tell Star the HQ is going to give me his honest impressions. And then, you know, you have like the... uh this firing mode with her pistol is awesome. I can tell it's going to be my favorite already. And then it's, oh, just uh, some gameplay. Like it's, IGN is super shilling this game as well. I assume Ubisoft gave them a lot of ad revenue to to make sure that they give them the best. Uh, again, this gameplay does not look super impressive. It's fine, but damn. So, yeah. You get these kind of like, and this is these positivity, like people, they're almost a ba basically almost a shallow, like we make fun of like the quarter or something that talk about, Oh, woke this woke that, you know, like they're really like completely captured by their audience. These people in a way are captured by the audience as well, because it's all like here, come in here. I'm going to say positive stuff about everything positive. Like I'll feel like, th like I watched one of his videos, like he'll throw in like a little, like, uh, a little bit of criticism like oh the explosions and particle effects aren't uh aren't quite up to snuff you know just to give like this sort of illusion that he's kind of being objective but really it's just oh this is great this is great this looks really cool just put everything in the best light possible because he knows and i mean look i'm not going to blame somebody for making a living this is the game they want to play uh and it makes, you know, if you're super positive, you can always get more opportunities, especially with av revenue, you know, through companies. If you're willing to play the game and play nice, uh, it gets you noticed by these other people in, mar in the marketing departments. So it makes you very marketable. Being marketable means, you know, not saying anything controversial. Uh, always being nice and very fair, well, fair in quotation marks to, to the game. And you're just shilling the game, hundred percent. Of course, you have to have the the right sort of audience too, and then they, it helps you out because you get he's got you know he gets exclusive content from playing it. He's already played the game. He gets you know this exclusive access to, like as I mentioned, as you mentioned here, this guy mentioned here, he got to talk to the game director and lead writer, so he can you know make content out of that, and of course it'll probably be promoted by Ubisoft and. Uh, the Star Wars Outlaw team, so he gets extra views that way. So there's a lot of benefit to doing this. The downside is that for your audience, which you know, may or may not care. I mean, maybe the audience just wants you know that sort of very shallow, sugary, everything's positive uh, type of vibe to it. But I think ultimately it just makes content that is relatively hollow doesn't actually help you know the audience uh, get any sort of deeper meaning out of it. And it's ultimately forgettable. You know, these people come and go with the breeze because I don't think they actually make content that's really uh, substantial. Would be the would I guess be my uh, m the best word I can think of for it. Let's see, you know, just further further going down to it. Incredible week. You know, they're posing with stuff. Uh, that's all. It's a it, it is what it is. But it's amazing to see that even now, uh, these YouTubers, uh, it's just becoming bigger and bigger. You can't even trust them. It's just, I guess, important to really have some sort of critical 
And this was just a story about this guy that put out a video that had to take it down because it wasn't approved. I guess maybe he didn't say enough nice stuff about uh, the game. So they had taken it down. So you have to get approval to put videos up about the stuff, even if you're cleared to put it out. And of course, you know, now with YouTube and the copyright system, they just, corporations have you by the balls to do this kind of stuff, which is crazy to me, but hopefully that will eventually change. Uh, the law will catch up to it. Even like to <laughs> even said, uh, even said, oh yeah, I, I recommend you should pre-order the game. It's good. But then they, they still made him take it down. It's pretty funny. Just more and more important to see, uh, the kind of be smart enough to see past, you know, what people's biases are. And of course, the sad thing is like Ubisoft just continues to put out stuff that's mediocre and then hopes that marketing can sort of just fool enough gullible people to get it to buy the game that's just overpriced and not worth the money that, and really you'll probably, like, as I mentioned with, uh, try visions of mana last week within like a year you're gonna get half off it's not like they actually believe this game is worth that much it, they're gonna get what they can right now it's formulaic oh it's you know a certain amount <clears throat> certain amount has passed time to hit you know time to hit it on sale steam sale or some other sale and bring it down generate some more revenue it's super formulaic it's not about making a really good game uh, it's just about quarterly profits and it's you know it is a business but it's uh, kind of sad to see especially in our artistic business that uh ubisoft continues to just put out stuff that just is slop but i mean when you look at the the game itself this has like this has a uh, esg written all over it we had a, a woman of color we have to color up cover up our cleavage completely uh I mean, you look, you've probably seen the character model for KVS. Uh, let's see. If you haven't seen, I'll bring it up. That's a, uh, that's, di they distorted her. Hold on. Let me try and find one that isn't uh distorted. Let's see. Model. That's the first one that came up. I'll, I'll use it, even though like they kind of. This is clearly a bit dishonest because I think they scrunched up her uh, face. I mean, look, she looks much sweeter and nicer uh, than this. I lost it again. Where'd it go? Right here. So they're clearly making the, the characters uglier just to uh, make them less. Again, you can't, you can't appear sexually attractive to, to the male audience, which makes up the vast majority of the people playing the game. So this underlying sort of hatred of male sexuality combined with, oh, we got to have representation. All of it just makes for, again, a lackluster game that's sad to see. Thankfully, though, at least is, uh, why do we move on to our next uh the next game i'm gonna be showing uh space marines 2 it seems like uh it's a bit better i'd give a good review if i was, yes i would too look i'm not against people want me to show for the game i'll definitely uh i'll definitely show for the game i'm not blaming them but again uh i don't want to trust them to give me a review of the game, at least an objective review of the game. I mean, thankfully, I played enough video games at this point that I can just kind of look at gameplay and see, like, eh, this doesn't look all too great. Like, this was a. In this, Star Wars Outlaws made, made me happy. This. And then again, the punches. Why? Why make you could just make it so much cuter. You could make her character so much cuter and more likable by just making her struggle with parts like this at least like the the cc attacks i mean the gun obviously she can kill anybody with a gun 
no matter what her size. But this this part that they showed off, this looks so bad. Like they're just stunned and they're like awkwardly walking around like, wow, this is exciting action right here. Oh, we got to have a lock picking system. It wouldn't be an Ubisoft game. <laughs> I saw another thing point out. Oh, they got a giant help icon to help you with it too. In case uh, you don't want to be stuck. It's just more, you know, this is a, again, more roller coaster ride type of gameplay where eh, if you're stuck on it, just hit the help button and it'll help you out. We don't want you to get stuck and frustrated. You paid $70 for an interactive movie, not, not an actual game. <laughs> 